what changes can we make as a consumer in our home and in our lives? So uh, as a consumer, we can move to a fossil fuel free house. We can work to make an energy efficient house and a resilient house. And, and like I've mentioned, what we do as a consumer uh, can have a really, um, a really strong impact, but it's very good for us too because we can um, take fossil fuels out of our home and take that, that pollution out of our home in that sense. And so we can move to um, heat pumps for heating. We can do ground source heat pump, pumps or air source heat pumps. There are cold climate heat pumps, folks in Maine actually are getting heat pumps even in Vermont and different places now. There used to be heat pumps were good for the south, but now there's new technology so you can get those so that you can get rid of your, um, your fossil fuel gas burning furnaces. And you can get electric vehicles when they're ready, but you can also uh, get LED lights to make your house more efficient, uh, get efficient appliances. You can do home energy audits and, and try, to use, try to make a better envelope to have more efficient homes. We, didn't, we weren't worried about electricity as a society before, about using too much um, in the years before. So many of our older homes are not, don't have as tight of envelopes because we would just burn electricity like crazy and so without much with much without much thought and so that's one of the things we can do we can also have home management systems so that we can manage the electricity in our home uh, Norway is doing a, a great job at um, I think a, a number of their houses are managed so you can manage your light and your heat so you can actually manage the heat from your house uh, from your phone right and you can look and say okay I'm not home, I'm gonna turn the heat down, or know that you are coming home, because I have had it where we've turned the heat down and then we forget to turn the heat up and then the house is cold. And you can turn it up when you're, you know, when you're coming home. And um, um, all of these things help with, as you, if you use less electricity in your house, then you have to build out less electricity. Then the utility doesn't need to build as much generation. And, and then the other thing you can do is, um, as a consumer, this can be a microgrid, a small little mi mini microgrid for yourself. If you put energy storage unit in and solar panels on your roof, you can be more resilient as a house. If the power goes out or there's an issue, then you can run vital, vital needs. And now as we become more dependent on electricity, it's, um, uh, it's more, you know, it's better and better to have, have that because when the power goes out and then your phone dies and then you can't make a call, you know, we use our landlines less and less. So our computer, then we can't use, we can't access the internet to send an email and it's frustrating. And so it's better to have, to have um, um, all of these small vital services running. Is a clean technology transformation happening on its own? In some sense, it is happening on its own. I mean, this technology is actually a better technology, clean technology. Fossil fuel technology is 20th century technology or 19th century technology. That's the old stuff. You know, in the last turn of the century, we had an um, energy transformation happen then, and we had new technology. We had electricity come, and we had um, cars, Ford Model Ts came out, and airplanes, and all of these things. And we're seeing another transformation now happening in this turn of the century. It's a, it's, um, What's happening is that the um, clean technologies like solar um, and wind technology, electric vehicles, energy storage are technologies that will get better and better, just like our personal computers where we have the smartphone now. These technologies will get better and the prices are dropping. Right now it is cheaper, the same price are cheaper to build a solar plant and a wind plant as a gas plant. It's actually cheaper to do wind than gas. In many cases, cheaper to do solar than natural gas. So the technology, as the prices keep dropping, they'll get cheaper and cheaper than our fossil fuel technology. So our fossil fuel technologies are dependent on the price of fuel as well. So if you have an internal combustion engine car, your car, to run your car, is, depends on the price of the fuel. 
and uh, the, the oil and the fluctuations that we have will impact uh, what the price of it will be. At some point, it's going to be cheaper to drive an electric vehicle than a car. I mean, right now, you, you, char you, um, you fuel your car for a dollar per gallon equivalent with an electric vehicle. So as the price continues to go down of these technologies, it's eventually going to be cheaper than natural gas plants. Coal plants, it is cheaper than coal plants. Your, your electric vehicle will be cheaper than, um, to run than the internal combustion car. And um, so what you'll see is disruption. And, and you'll see that just like with our digital cameras that took over the um, film-based cameras or um, our cell phones now that, that have taken, um, taken the market from the analog phone, you know, we don't have cord-based phones anymore. <laughs> so, I mean, you can use them. I actually have one for security purposes. So when the, when the electricity goes down, you can still make a call, right? But, but um, you know, um, I think that you'll see with the clean technologies that they will disrupt the fossil fuel technologies. These are 21st century technology. Energy storage prices are dropping. And storage um, is better at managing the renewable energy on the, on the grid than the um, than gas plants, for instance. So as the prices continue to drop, you'll just see more and more of this. So even if there were no climate change, this would be happening. You know, it's going to be happening anyway. The question is, will it happen in time for for us to not blow our greenhouse gas budget and to keep the temperature rise from being from being too high? I'm not sure. It, it could happen faster than we can imagine. You know, I got a film-based camera when I graduated from college, from high, uh, from high school, from graduate school. And within two years, I couldn't find a place to, to develop my film. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes it happens like that. In the last turn of the century, we saw major technological advances with electricity and the automobile. Are we seeing something similar today with renewable energy and other clean technology? Yeah, we are seeing different technology, different, um, advances for sure. We're seeing, we're seeing um, energy storage technology just take off. There are many different types of energy storage technology. There are flywheels and battery storage. There's energy storage that's in, um, um, uh, that you can pump into the ground and take out and, and air, um, compressed air storage. And uh, it's, there's kind of a menagerie of storage technologies. And there's different types of um, solar PV technologies now as well. Not solar PV, but solar technologies, concentrated solar, solar PV. Um, and, it'll, and people are continually thinking about how to make the utilization of solar energy more efficient even. So <clears throat> wind technology, they're talking about putting wind turbines higher and higher above where birds fly, above where the wind blows all the time so that we can continually produce uh, wind technology. So we are really in the beginning stages in some sense of this clean technology, like at the last turn of the century when we had the Ford Model T, you know, and, and folks were riding around in that, <laughs> in that car. We are really, I think, at the beginning of this where we can actually utilize the solar, um, the power of the sun to actually power our energy needs. And we can be a cleaner, safer, um, healthier, uh, civilization, basically, you know, where humans can live better. We've we've been burning fossil fuels to power our our civilization and our life, and and it's brought a lot of changes. And we've grown from the 1900s, you know, for sure, from the beginning of of the turn of the century. I mean, my grandparents saw saw this happen, really, right? And um, but now we are going to be seeing it. And we are, you know, you can think of all of the changes that we're seeing. And they are sometimes a bit scary. And at the last turn of the century, people were afraid of electricity. They were afraid of cars and they were afraid of airplanes. And people were very afraid of electricity. People uh, were writing about the rural life and the beauty of it and how it was being destroyed and the way of life was being destroyed. And it was transformed forever. Um, and so again, we are transforming things. We're talking about electric vehicles and we're also talking about autonomous vehicles. And 
we're talking about um, bioengineering and you know a lot of things coming our way, um, virtual reality, um, you know, artificial intelligence, right? You know, we have so many things as well as clean technology. Clean technology is part of this transformation that's happening at our time. We are seeing it. We're in another revolution. It's a clean energy revolution. And it is um, exciting. Sometimes it's, it's um, a little scary for a 20th century kid, which I am for sure. And, uh, but, it's, but it's something that we're seeing happen right now, real time. You know, we're, right now there are a lot of Tesla Model 3s on the road and you've seen them and EVs are coming. There's a million electric vehicles on the road. China sold a million electric vehicles uh, there's a million electric vehicles in the United States on the world, on the road. China sold a million electric vehicles last year. There's five million um, on the road now. And every year we get more and more electric vehicles. It took a good five years for the first one million to get on the road. And it took uh, six months for the last one million to get on the road. And we'll continue to do that. And as our auto industry starts talking about more EVs and uh, an all electric or electric future, we'll see more and more. So I think just like one day we had big, huge cell phones, you know, or big, huge flip phones or big, or cordless, I remember the cordless phone where you weren't tethered to your, your telephone, right? Because I had a cord and I would talk to my friends in middle school wrapping myself around that cord and you'd get a long cord so you could move further from one end of the kitchen to the other and actually get something. You know, and then we ended up with a cordless phone. That was awesome. And now we have smartphones that are these powerful computers, you know, that connect us to the entire world. I mean, my father-in-law will Skype with us now to talk to his grandkids, you know. And so um, clean technology is part of that. We're moving in that direction. And, and we've seen it. Solar... Power and wind power is cheaper now at the utility scale to put in than natural gas. So I think fossil fuel is 20th century and 19th century. It's part of the industrial revolution that happened at that time. <clears throat> and now we're seeing something new, and clean technology is the new. So it's, it's pretty exciting um, to be part of that and to be able to see that. You know, I always thought it would have been really cool to be my grandparents and to have seen the last turn of the century and the revolution that happened there. And now I'm actually part of seeing the new uh, transformation happen. How can our utilities help? So utilities can be a really important partner or, or actually help, help this transformation happen. If we are running all of our, electricity, or all of our energy on electricity, they're, they're the ones providing the fuel for our energy needs in, in, civil, in our society. And that's actually, they're going to have a huge role in, in bringing electricity for, for all of us. So the utility can be a really big part of this for sure. And hopefully they can help move this forward rather than block it. In some cases, they've been blocking it recently. You know, they're, it's new. Solar panels on people's houses disrupt their the status quo of how things have been going, so they've been blocking. But instead of blocking it, they can be facilitators. And, and they can work with us as customers also to help us do it. So one thing is they, um, you can have, and the other thing is we can have the commissioners that can allocate, allow for the allocation of funds to do it. It would be helpful for, because the utilities, many of the public utility, um, private utilities are regulated and, and you need, the regulators to say, yes, go ahead and invest. And we need our regulators to be, to support this transformation. Because sometimes the folks in the utility actually want to do something, but the regulators control the price of electricity. And they say, no, 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 don't do that. It's too expensive. It's going to hurt the rate payer. So we need, we need, we need the utility to be on board with doing these transformations because they're at the forefront of it. So there is a, there are a few utilities that are very progressive and they see the future and they want to be part of the future. They don't want to be disrupted and they want to, to make it happen. So one, um, 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 Xcel Energy um, is actually one very large utility that said they want, they're going to be 
100% clean energy by the year oh, 2050, I believe. They said 2050 or maybe it was before. And um, so they're actually going to start implementing more and more uh, solar and wind technology. An another, two other utilities, one is private, one is public, is um, Green Mountain Power of Vermont. They're doing really neat stuff. They're really doing what our utilities should be doing. And Sac Sacramento Municipal District, uh, Utility District, SMUD. Uh, my co-author actually headed, Dave Freeman, headed SMUD a uh, number of years back. And they're looking at doing all electric homes as well, with, and they're engaging with the customer. And for the utility, it's really important to have a good relationship with their customer. Um, reliability is important to them, but believe it or not, they really do care about having a good relationship with us. So the utility could help us a bunch as the consumer in, in, um, and the customer in transforming our homes because they deliver electricity and to our buildings, businesses and buildings as well. Um, and Green Mountain Power is doing a great job with that where they're actually sending folks to people's homes and they're doing clean energy, uh, they're doing home energy audits and then they're helping with finding the contractors and they're helping finance it and then they roll all of the price for what they're doing into the electricity bill. So they're really, because financing is a big deal. Finding the contractors is a big deal, and just knowing how to do it. We don't have time. So my co-author, Dave Freeman, talked about every utility should have green doctors who come to your house and basically uh, upgrade your, your house and make it energy efficient. So what, what um, um, Green Mountain Power is actually doing that. Green Mountain Power is going and they have those folks come in, they bring contractors, they'll, they'll put, help you get solar panels on your roof, they'll help you get energy storage units, they'll help you make it more efficient, put LED lights in, you know, do the insulation you need. They get help you get heat pumps and finance that. Uh, and um, I think they help with electric vehicle, um, getting electric vehicles as well, and also what you would need for that. I, from what I've read, they've even helped some customers get off the grid. Completely. And then they have worked with um, banks for financing. So you can finance all of this, pay the same price as you would have paid for your normal electricity before, because now you're more efficient. You're not using as much electricity and, um, uh, and as, much, as much energy as well. Like if we're, you'd be paying for natural gas or whatever, or oil or whatever you're powering or you're heating with and they roll it into your electricity bill, and it's financed. And then once it's paid off, if you stay in the house long enough, your electricity, your energy bills are gonna go down because now you have solar panels and energy storage and heat pumps that are 300% efficient instead of 90% efficient, 90-ish percent efficient like your natural gas. So that utility is doing all that because it is very hard to find, it can be hard to find the contractors that you need or get the financing you need. So my parents had gotten a heat pump and they, I, their natural gas furnace uh, went kaput and I told my father, oh, okay, this is a great time now. Time to get a, a heat pump, it's really cool. And get this brand or this brand. I've heard they're really good. You know, um, I, I checked the Energy Trust of Oregon. They suggested a few contractors, you know, go. <laughs> and I give it to my dad because he's takes care of everything. I didn't think he would have any trouble. But then he was like, oh, I can't find the financing and this is difficult. And it, it's about, it was about $12,000 for the unit and it was both a heater and an air conditioner. So it's for both together. And in the end, he chose the heat pump that had 0% financing with it. And it, it basically, it was a cold climate heat pump. The contractor said it was good. We've been told it's a good heat pump. Uh, Oregon doesn't get very cold. So, um, you don't need as, as powerful as of a cold climate heat pump. If you're in Maine, you're going to need one that goes down to below zero, you know, that can still um, run at colder temperatures um, and still be 100% efficient, 300% efficient. Anyway, so he got it, but it wasn't, um, wasn't as easy, you know. So the utility, like Green, any, every utility should be doing what Green Mountain Power is doing. They really should. And that would be enormously helpful for the consumer. Thank you.